Hello, this is an Algebra 2 video. It is Chapter 4, Section 4. We are dealing with complex numbers today. And um, to begin with complex numbers, well, the first thing we have to do is introduce you to the imaginary unit, which we call i. And i is defined as the square root of negative 1. So you can simplify, as we will demonstrate here in our examples, you can simplify um, square roots when you have negatives. You know, in the past, we've always said you can't take the square root of a negative number. Um, that's because you can't take the square root of a, of a negative number and still be in the real world. But once you allow yourself um, to enter into the imaginary world, doesn't that seem scary? Um, then you can actually deal with um, square roots of negatives when you use the imaginary unit i. So we want to simplify, and what's going to happen first and foremost is you want to separate the positive and the negative. So this is going to be 27 times negative 1. That will give us negative 27. And then because the square root of negative 1 is i, we can kind of get rid of that guy, and he's going to turn into an i. And then 27 we can break down into 9 times 3. Just do a little factor tree here. And the square root of 9 is 3. And then this 3 doesn't break down any further. So we're going to end up with our final answer here, 3 root 3 i. And that's your simplified version for part A. Um, in the case of this little guy, you're going to start off in much the same way, 216 times negative 1. This guy's going to be i. But luckily for us, the square root of 216, let's see here, I'm pretty confident that the square root of 216, um, oh, it's not. So 216 has to break down into something. What are we going to divide 16 by here? Um, 36. 216 divided by 36 is 6. So 216 will break down to 36 and 6. And the square root of 36 is 6. So that kind of takes care of that guy. So our answer here is going to be 6 root 6 i. All right? So it's not very complicated. So now what I need you to do is I need you to um, get this, uh, do it yourself, number one over here, and then we will move on. Okay. All right. So another thing I wanted to show you with these eyes is um, how cool they are here is um, kind of ignore the remainder thing for now because it's probably not making sense. But you can actually get increasing um, uh, exponents for i. So we have i up here at the very beginning, as we already stated, is equal to, um, I'm not sure my percent went, is equal to the square root of negative 1. Then what would i squared be? i squared would be the square root of negative 1 squared, and the square root and the square root cancel, you get negative 1. i cubed would be i squared times i, which would be the negative 1, because i squared is negative 1, times i, which would give you negative i. And then i to the fourth could be written as i squared times i squared, which would be negative 1 times negative 1, which would equal 1. So basically, these are the only four options that you have for i's. What would i to the fifth be? What would i to the sixth be? Believe it or not, once you get past i to the fourth, i to the fifth is the same thing as i. i to the sixth is the same thing as i squared. i to the seventh is the same thing as i cubed. i to the fourth is the same thing as... I'm sorry, i to the 8th is the same thing as i to the 4th. And that pattern just keeps repeating forever. Um, so what I've done over here is I've kind of given you guys um, a way that you can tell. They might ask you in your homework, like, what is i to the 39th power? You could sit there and keep, you know, counting, you know, groups of four. But the easiest thing to do is to take your calculator and um, take the exponent, like in this case it's 39, and divide it by 4. And if you get... A remainder of 1. In other words, if 4 goes into 39, um, however many times, but then has a remainder of 1, and you would know that it had a remainder of 1 because it would be 1 fourth or 0.25. So if you have a number that says um, 0.25 after it, then it's going to be the exact same thing as i. If you get a remainder of 2, which would mean that your decimal would have a 0.5 after it, then you know that it's going to be the same thing as negative 1 or i squared. If you have a remainder of 3, which is what we get, when 39 divided by 4 is actually 9.75. So we have a remainder of 3, which is 0.75 decimal. That means that this is the same thing as i cubed, 
which means that it's going to be negative i. So my answer for i to the 39th power is negative i. And then very similarly, you can take 106, which is our next one, divide that by 4, and you get 26.5. Because it's a 0.5, it's going to be the same thing as negative 1. 1,021 divided by 4 is 255.25. So you get a 0.25 remainder, so you get this little guy, which is the same thing as i. And then 500 divided by 4 should be a no-brainer because it's a 500, so it goes in evenly. So if it divides evenly and it has no remainder, then it's going to be the same thing as i to the fourth, which is equal to 1. Okay? So that's how you do that. And so in the do-it-yourself number 2, you will see that you have um, one that you can try. But I'm going to do this over here, um, simplifying with i. So it's really simple to simplify. It says here negative 5 times 3i. You just multiply the, the coefficients and you get negative 15i. Not a big deal. Um, over here it says the square root of negative 6. Remember that, again, you have to break that down. And you're going to get um, the square root of 6 times the square root of negative 1, which is i. So what we have here is root 6i. And then over here you do the same thing. You're going to get the square root of 15 times the square root of negative 1, that's going to be i. So you have this times root 15i. Um, and what you're going to do now is because you have two square roots here, you can take your 6 and your 15 and combine them. So 6 times 15 is 90. So I'm going to get the square root of 90 times i squared because i times i is i squared. And we said earlier that i squared is negative 1. So that means it's going to be negative 1 times the square root of 90. But now the negative is not under the square root, it's outside. But we can break down 90 into 9 times 10. And the square root of 9 is 3. And the square root of 10 doesn't break down any further. So my final answer is negative 3 root 10. So my part A was negative 15i, part B get negative 3 root 10. So now if you'll try do yourself number 2, we can move on to example 3. You can probably tell right now that um, the lesson today is not very complicated, but there are several um, examples. Um, there's seven examples, I think, but they go by pretty quickly. So in example 3, it says solve x squared plus 64, which before posed the problem, but now it will not. Because if you tried solving this before, you would go x squared, you would subtract the 64, and you would get negative 64. You took the square root of both sides, and then you get a negative, and you're like, oh, I can't do that. It's not possible. And you kind of have to leave it at that. But now we can actually deal with it because we have complex numbers or imaginary numbers. So first of all, don't forget your plus or minus whenever you square root both sides of an equation. You want to put your plus or minus. And we want to break this down into negative 1 times 64. And we know that the square root of negative 1 is i. But the square root of 64 is 8. So we get plus or minus 8i. And that is how you solve um, by extracting square roots, if you have, by taking square roots of both sides, when you have a negative. So now if you'll try to do it yourself number 3, a and b, we'll move on to example 4. Okay, so here we go. Now we're going to do operations with complex numbers, which basically means addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. And that's literally what we're going to do. Four, five, six, and seven. I told you there were seven examples. And so we're going to do addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And then we're going to be done. Okay, but first I want to remind you that a complex number is basically a number that has two parts. It has a real part and an imaginary part. Um, so when you're adding and subtracting complex numbers, the real part, basically the way that you add them is that the real part has to be, um, has to be the same as the, you want, I'm so sorry, I don't know why you said that, but okay, I just had a little brain fart. But when you're adding numbers, complex numbers, you want to add the real parts together and then add the imaginary parts together in separate um, things. But before we get to the addition, we have this little example, which is basically um, to equate two complex numbers. Two complex numbers are only equal if their real parts are equal and if their imaginary parts are equal at the same time. So for example, in this case, this is the real part 
of this number, and this is the real part of that number. In a similar fashion, this is the imaginary part, so you can kind of see this is A plus BI, and this is A plus BI. So the only way that these two um, sides of the equation can be true, because let's find the values of X and Y to make, to make it true, is for 3X minus 5 to equal 7, so the real parts have to be equal, and to make the imaginary parts equal as well. So Y minus 3 has to equal 6. If that happens, then this statement would be true. So our job is basically just to solve it. So we're going to add 5, and you get 3X equals 12, divide by 3, so X equals 4. If X is 4, then the real parts of this statement will be true. And then over here, we just add 3, and so Y equals 9. So the two values of X and Y, 4 and 9, will make this statement true. And so now, um, in your case, it's a little bit more complicated, but you have, here's your real part of the first part, and here's the real part of the second. So those two need to be equal if you want this to be true. And then this is the imaginary part of the first and the imaginary part of the second. And again, if you want this to be equal, then those two imaginary parts have to be equal. So this is a little bit more complicated than the one that I did, but um, hopefully with the um, hints I just gave you, you should be able to do just fine. All right. So now we can go to the addition and subtraction, which is what I was trying to do in the first place. Here we have addition, and here we have subtraction. But like I was saying earlier, in order for you to um, add two complex numbers, you want to add their real parts. So 5 plus 2 is 7. And then you want to add their imaginary parts. So negative 7 and positive 4 is going to give you a negative... So I'm going to remove this plus because I'm going to end up with a negative, because negative 7 plus 4 is negative 3i. And that is how complicated it is. All you have to do is add the real part, add the imaginary part, and then put it together. So we get 7 minus 3i. Now in the case of subtraction, that one you've got to be a little more careful because a lot of times people forget to distribute the negative here to both. But other than that, it's the same idea. You take 4 and subtract 3. So this is 4 minus 3. And that part most people usually get right. That's just going to be 1. But the second part is where people get confused sometimes. You have negative 8, and then you have minus negative 6i. Minus negative, so this is my negative 8. Minus negative makes that a plus 6i. So this is negative 8 plus 6. So negative 8 plus 6 is negative 2i. And again, it just you know, if you want, you can just distribute it your, um, first and then add them, if that'll make it easier for you. But just remember that um, that's something that people oftentimes get confused. Um, they don't distribute the negative. So be careful with that when you do the do-it-yourself question. All right, so that's addition and subtraction. And then this is actually multiplication, but it's a little bit of a word problem, but it's actually not that complicated. Um, but it says here, in an AC circuit, the voltage V current C and impedance I are related by the formula V equals C times I, so hence the multiplication part. You, if you, to get the voltage, you have to take current times impedance. And it says here, find the voltage in a circuit, so they want us to find V with the current, yes. excuse me, with a current of 2 plus 4J and an impedance of 9 minus 3J. So they basically, the current is 2 plus 4J. So let's go... 2 plus 4j, and we want to multiply that by the impedance, which is 9 minus 3j. And in this case, we're treating the j as if it were an i. And to find the voltage, we have to multiply these two. And that's how um, I'm going to show you how to do multiplication. And multiplication is going to require us to do what we learned in the last lesson, which is to FOIL. Um, so we're going to go first times first, so we're going to go 2 times 9 is 18. And then outside times outside is going to give us 2 times negative 3j, which is negative 6j. And then inside times inside is 9 times 4j, which is actually 36j. And then last times last is negative 12 
j squared. Okay? Now remember though that we've already said that i squared, or in this case j squared, is the same thing as negative 1. So what we have is negative 12 times negative 1, which is actually positive 12. Also, we have like terms here where we have 36j and negative 6j, which actually only leaves us with 30j. And then we have the 18. So now we can combine the 18 and the 12 and get 30. So 18 plus 12 will give us 30, and then you have the plus 30j. And this is your voltage, 30 plus 30j volts, okay? So now what I want you to do is it says same, um, same parameters with the V equals CI, but in, in do-it-yourself number six, the current is 2 minus 4j, and the impedance is 3 minus 2j, and so you need to multiply those and get um, um, the answer. All right, so then we have our last example. I told you that it was going to go by quickly. Um, our last example is division, and I'm going to do two of them over here, and then you'll try to do it yourself over there. And um, division is really not like division in the sense that you would think, you know, the little division symbol or the division bar um, that we normally use. Um, what you're really doing with division is more simplifying. Um, it's improper to have imaginary units on the bottom, just like it's improper to have square roots on the bottom. So the method for us to simplify is very similar to the method for us to simplify when you have square roots. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to multiply by what we call the conjugate. So you want to multiply, not, not the conjugate of the top, the conjugate of the bottom. And the conjugate is basically the opposite. Um, so this is 3 plus 6i. So you're going to multiply by 3 minus 6i on top and bottom. There's a very good reason for that. Um, and basically what ends up happening is that you have a plus b i and a minus b i. And I'm going to show you right here what happens with a plus b i and a minus b i. And then I'm going to erase it. And then if you want to keep it, you can. If you want to use it, um, I'm going to be using it. Um, it's a lot faster than, than foiling. But I am going to foil it once so you can see this is kind of the formula. And it only applies when you have imaginary numbers, okay? so. If I were to FOIL this formula, a plus bi, a minus bi, which is kind of what I have here, a plus bi, a minus bi, um, you get first times first is a squared, and then outside times outside is negative a bi. Inside times inside is positive a bi. And last times last is positive times negative, so negative b squared i squared, because it's b times b, i times i. And we've already said that i squared is negative 1. And so negative b squared and negative 1 is positive b squared. And then the negative abi and the positive abi cancel, and all you're left with is a squared plus b squared. So basically, any time you have a plus bi and a minus bi and you're multiplying, it's always going to end up being a squared plus b squared. So again, you can write that formula down if you want to, and then you can use it in the future. Um, or you can just, you know, foil, foil, foil to your heart's content. If you foil the bottom of example 7a, you will get the same thing. It'll just take you longer. But I'm going to go ahead and use the formula. And so I have a, in my case, is 3, and b, in my case, is 6. Notice that I'm not including the i in the b. The b is only the coefficient of i. So um, according to the formula, the answer will be a squared plus b squared. So the answer is going to be 3 squared plus 6 squared on the bottom if I FOIL it. Um, and 3 squared is 9, and 6 squared is 36, and 36 plus 9 is 45. So on the bottom, I'm going to get 45. On the top, I don't really have to FOIL because it's not two binomials. So I'm going to go 2i times 3 is 6i, and then 2i times negative 6i is negative 12i squared, but this i squared is also going to be negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 12 will make for a positive 12, and I'll put that first because the real part goes first, and then I'll have plus 6i divided by 45. Now all three of these numbers look to me like they can be... Um, divisible by 3. So we're going to do that. Um, 12 divided by 45. 
is 4 fifteenths and 6 divided by 45 is 2 fifteenths. So this would be my final answer. 4 fifteenths plus 2 fifteenths. It's very important that you separate the two into a real part and an imaginary part. Alrighty? And that's how you do it. Part B will be a lot easier because you don't have a binomial on the bottom. So the only thing you have to get rid of is that i, and the only thing you need to get rid of an i is another i, because an i times i is i squared. So um, all we have to do is multiply this by i over i. And so you're going to get um, 4 times i is 4i on top, and i times i is plus i squared. And on the bottom you're going to get 5i times i is 5i squared. Okay, then we're going to deal with our i squareds. So right here, this i squared is going to be negative 1, and this i squared is going to be negative 1. So remember, we want to put the real part first. So since this turned into a negative 1, we're going to go negative 1, and then plus 4i. On the bottom, you're going to get 5 times negative 1, or just negative 5. And then again, um, none of this goes in evenly. You can't really reduce the fraction. But you do want to write it as separate um, parts. So a negative 1 divided by negative 5 is positive 1 fifth. And then 4 divided by negative 5 is a negative 4 fifths i. And that would be part b. Um, 1 fifth minus 4 fifths i. So now you can finish um, do it yourself number 7. And once you have done that, you will have completed your notes for this lesson. And I will see you in class. And thanks for watching.